Hello, I'm Dr. Bridget Nash, and I'd like to welcome you to The Therapy Show, a podcast series that seeks to demystify mental health treatment. Today, I'm honored to welcome Dr. John Norcross, who is a distinguished professor of psychology at the University of Scranton and author of the acclaimed self-help book, Changeology. He has authored over 400 publications and written many books on the field of psychotherapy, including the APA Handbook of Clinical Psychology and the Systems of Psychotherapy, which is currently in its ninth edition. Dr. Norcross has received many awards, including Pennsylvania Professor of the Year from the Carnegie Foundation, the Distinguished Contributions to Education and Training Award from the American Psychological Association, Fellow Status in Multiple Associations, and Election to the National Academies of Practice. Dr. Norcross, welcome to The Therapy Show. Thank you, Bridget, and hello to you and your listeners. Can you start by telling us a little bit about your personal background and professional development that led to your research in the field of individual therapy? You bet. By training, I'm a clinical psychologist, and by choice, I'm a psychotherapy and behavior change researcher. For the last 40 years or so, I've been conducting individual therapy and research on on the effectiveness of individual treatment. I'm also a researcher on how people change on their own without psychotherapy, or what we call changeology, literally the science of behavior change. So I've been involved with this uh, almost uh, half a century now. So how would you briefly explain the field of individual therapy to a non-professional? It's one distressed client meeting with one mental health professional in a safe, private setting. It is by far the single most popular format of psychotherapy, way more popular than group therapy or family therapy. In fact, about 80% of all psychotherapy counseling and case management is one-to-one or individual therapy in nature. So it's largely what most people call talk therapy, verbal exchanges, focus on reaching the client's or the patient's individual treatment goals. And in individual therapy, we emphasize both the therapeutic relationship and the treatment methods. Both contribute to patient success. Who is individual therapy most effective for? And why should someone choose an individual therapist over many other types of mental health treatment service? Well, individual therapy boasts lots of advantages. It's certainly the most intense and individualized format. It's one clinician focused entirely on one client. So there's lots of opportunities to discuss reactions in the relationship, to review the week, to drill down into personal concerns. Individual therapy is also probably the most private and confidential format. There's no other patients. It's just literally one-on-one. And people typically uh, present to individual therapy for three reasons. The first is a relief from distressing disorders. And the research has investigated now literally dozens and dozens of these behavioral disorders, depression, anxiety, addictions, and so forth. A second primary reason is individual therapists help clients cope with problematic events in our lives, be that grief, divorce, relationship breakups, roommate problems. And third, individual therapy is not just to remediate problems, it's also to enhance personal growth and development. If you're seeking the most intense treatment for an individual internal problem, then individual therapy is probably the treatment of choice. When interpersonal problems are the main focus, then we encourage clients to consider an interpersonal format, such as group therapy, couple therapy, or family therapy. So having said that, let me emphasize, of course, that it's not either or. Lots of patients receive both individual therapy and couples or group. We encourage people to choose all that work for them. What's the average length of treatment for somebody working with an individual therapist? Well, it naturally depends on the person and the problem. But the average length of individual therapy is between 6 and 12 sessions. Those sessions tend to run 45 to 50 minutes. What skills, habits, or tactics can patients and therapists adopt either during their sessions or in between sessions to improve the effectiveness of of individual therapy? Oh, Lord, Bridget, we could spend an hour on that question alone. 
But for patients, try to disclose your concerns as honestly and as quickly as you can. I know that requires a leap of faith and perhaps more trust than you're immediately comfortable with, but that will accelerate the process. If you don't express to your therapist why you're there or what you hope to accomplish to the 12th or 15th session, that's obviously going to delay the process. Try to discuss your reactions to the therapy and your therapist directly in session. If things are going well, you feel comfortable, please express that. But more so if things are not going particularly well. Rather than walking away with your feet, use your words to discuss what's not working. and Then you and your therapist can sort that out and perhaps move to plan B. Please work hard between sessions. Try new behaviors and relationships. Decades of research converge in showing that clients who work hard between sessions, homework assignments, thinking of topics, speaking to people, tend to do better on average than those who don't do much between sessions. And finally, try to approach each session with realistic expectations and high motivations. We know people who come in with better motivations do better in psychotherapy. You also ask what therapists might do, and of course, Having spent 40 plus years investigating this, I, I have a long list, but I'll, I'll try to simplify it. All good therapists are going to try to create and maintain a strong therapeutic relationship with you. They're going to try to create a warm, trusting bond. They're going to ensure that both they and you as a client agree on therapy tasks, that you collaborate on the therapy goals. It's hard to get somewhere unless you know where that where might be. Good therapist. Adopt research-supported methods to help patients reach goals. Effective therapists frequently assess progress. Such therapists will repair any relationship tensions or alliance ruptures. So if you as a client are not feeling particularly comfortable or insulted or not understood, please discuss that as often as you feel comfortable. The research and common sense also tell us that good therapists try to tailor or personalize therapists to you, the individual patient. Yes, certainly for your particular goal, but also to your preferences. How often do you want to meet? How active or directive do you want the therapist to be? Good therapists will also personalize to your stages of change. Are you thinking about change and need help getting started? Or are you already started and you find yourself sliding back or not sure what to do? In the psychotherapy research, that's called the stages of change. And therapists who individualize treatment to the patient's stage of change do much better work. So I think I'll stop there on my big list. That was great. What are the most common obstacles or missteps that prevent therapists and patients alike from seeing the full benefits of individual therapy? Well, three spring to mind. Uh, probably the first is the failure to establish that strong therapy or counseling relationship. Within three sessions, you should feel fairly comfortable and bonded with your individual therapist. That feeling is the single best predictor of therapy success, and by the way, failure. So if within three sessions you're not feeling it, please raise it with your individual therapist, perhaps readjust tactics, or perhaps it's the time to seek someone else. A second big common obstacle is the failure to periodically assess progress toward your goals. In truth, lots of patients consult with me after a year or two of therapy with no progress. They routinely say, well, I like my therapist, but I haven't obtained any movement or progress. And I simply ask, well, do you and your counselor or therapist sit and speak about being less depressed, less anxious, less using less substances? And they say, no, not really. And that would be a bit like the physician, Bridget, not taking vital signs or ordering occasional blood labs. I mean, what, you just have to assess how things are going to know, in fact, how you are doing. So that's a, a, a huge misstep. And a third uh, common obstacle is probably the failure to be realistic about uh, those therapy goals and time. We all know it typically has taken years upon years for problems to grow and to manifest. So realistically, it's going to expect some time and considerable effort to resolve them. Changing behavior is simply hard work. So let's be realistic about what it's going to take from the outset. 
Can you share a poignant example where individual therapy had a major impact in someone's life without sharing any identifying information? Well, there could be hundreds, probably thousands of uh, examples from my own history. And by the way, I ought to just say straight out, individual psychotherapy is incredibly powerful within a few sessions. So think about this. In an average of maybe 10 hours with another human being, clients typically obtain enormous relief from the distressing symptoms and feel much better about themselves. From a research perspective, the average effect of psychotherapy is as strong, if not stronger than practically any medication we are routinely prescribed. But I know saying that from a research context is helpful, but we seem hardwired as humans to enjoy the individual story or narrative. So here's one, and uh, the patient, now a former patient, contacted me just yesterday. I had seen her for probably 50 or so sessions about 10 years ago. She had recently relocated to another state and was checking in, expressing her gratitude, and she knew correctly that I would be keen to hear how things went. So she came to me fresh out of prison. Her addiction had led her life into a spiral of despair including severe anxiety and depression. Uh, like many prisoners, she had also begun to experience post-traumatic symptoms just from being in prison, which, by the way, was a medium security prison. So not the worst, not the whole, but anyone removed from their family, their friends, and their ordinary life surely can be tra traumatized. By virtue of her high motivation in psychotherapy, she was able to cut out multiple addictions within about 10 sessions. The work on her severe anxiety and depression took a little longer. We also considered medication at some point, but she decided to try it without. And by virtue of her hard work and her trust and putting things into action, she went from the severe level of depression into the normal level within about six months. Her anxiety took a little longer than the depression, which is typically the case. At about 40 sessions, we moved from weekly individual sessions to individual sessions every two weeks. She then joined a 12-step group, did some self-help materials, and it's just one of those, as she says, reshaped her life, and she currently calls herself 2.0. It's actually her first name, 2.0, as though this is the second rendition of her life. And I must say, and I'm sure you feel this as well, Bridget, this is the enormous helpers high, that yeah. incredible privilege of working with people who literally transform their lives. And we're privileged to see that week in and week out. That is absolutely true. That's a great story. Do you want to say another one? Well, I do. And, and just because I'm finishing with this gentleman, you mentioned at the beginning of the podcast that I do lots of academic work. And when you tend to write and publish a lot, you get known. And, and therefore... Uh, most of my clients are fellow mental health professionals over the years, uh, probably because that's also one of my research areas. But to ensure that I only don't see fairly wealthy verbal, I make it a point uh, to always take on one or two homeless individuals. Our local community resource specialist uh, refers people. And so this gentleman was literally living under the bridge. Uh, I did convince him uh, within a few sessions, as had social workers before me, to try to move for safety reasons from under the bridge into a homeless shelter. After a few more sessions after that, he agreed to take the job training since he had been out of the workforce for many years. Of course, this was a, a gentleman who was quite talented, but uh, due to a severe mental illness, uh, schizophrenia, and addictions and financial tragedies, he had just become homeless. With the job training, with support, with us also arranging for him to resume low doses of his medication, within three months, suddenly he had a job and moved into an apartment. And this was a man who was exceedingly reluctant to even try psychotherapy, let alone come into an office. So we are finishing. He's begun to date. He was recently promoted at work moved to a slightly nicer apartment, and within a year, 
just see another poignant example of when people harness the resources with support, with some medication, with some psychotherapy, lots of encouragement, and most importantly, his hard work, he literally uh, revolutionized his life, all within about 30 sessions. And these are the success stories we need to hear about because they are, there are so many, and we often don't hear about these success stories when people are off living their lives, right? Yes, and for and for reasons of privilege and confidentiality, exactly. we can rarely rarely speak in great detail about any of these. And so many people just hear from the occasional discontents for whom psychotherapy didn't work, or at least a particular counselor or therapist didn't work. And along that vein, I would immediately encourage anyone, if you've had an unsatisfactory course of psychotherapy, please do consult someone else and try again. It's part of that magical, almost mysterious therapeutic relationship. But if the first one didn't work, please try another, as you would assuredly do with medications, ointments, or food choices. Try it again. That's really good advice. Who is individual therapy not appropriate for? Well, when the treatment goal is primarily to alter relationships among other living people, then the research advises clients to select another therapy format that primarily focuses on those relationships. So group therapy is a great treatment format for those experiencing chronic relationship dissatisfaction. You have the opportunity to experiment, get feedback with relationships in a controlled safe setting. If your primary difficulty is with another couple or family member, then what we call conjoint couple or family therapy tends to be the treatment of choice. And, of course, that is not either or, as I said earlier. Lots of people, including my patients, simultaneously receiving individual therapy, but then also join a group or before or after the individual therapy, also do some couple and family sessions. What are you most excited about in mental health treatment today? Well, this is a very exciting time indeed in mental health. So I'm, I'm quite excited about lots of things here. First, we're more efficient than ever in doing psychotherapy. We are more focused. We know what works a little better. So we now accomplish in 12 sessions what used to take, say, 20 or so sessions. Psychotherapy is maturing. It's still fairly young at about 100 years. And like other mature disciplines, we're getting rid of schoolism. That is, people following their individual theories. Like other mature disciplines, integration um, has now occurred. The effective therapist will use all methods and relationships that work. We're no longer constrained by single theories, be they psychodynamic, interpersonal, humanistic, cognitive, behavioral, systemic, feminist, and the like. Use all that works, just as would any other competent healthcare professional. When you go to your family physician, he or she isn't only going to use the antibiotic theory of health, or the surgery theory. They're going to use all that works, and that's what psychotherapy is now doing. And this movement is frequently called psychotherapy integration. That has enabled us to also individualize and personalize therapy to the individual client and the singular context. Research and common sense attest that such personalization results in more efficient and effective treatment. In fact, it parallels what's happening in medicine, personalized medicine. So we can now identify those important aspects of an individual client and then tailor therapy in ways that make it work even better. And finally, uh, I'm excited about the advance of self-help materials, particular computer and mobile phone applications. And sometimes this is called mHealth, uh, that is mental health, uh, apps, telepsychotherapy, and the like. These can be offered as standalone therapies, and the research shows that they work slightly less effectively than one-to-one. -one. But I'm particularly excited about these electronic self-help resources, not instead of individual therapy, but in addition to that. So when you're uh, seeking individual psychotherapy, and there's not time for everything, well, a lot of that can now be done on a computer or in the privacy of your mobile phone. You can periodically assess how you're doing, say, in depression, anxiety, in your relationship. You can read up on a particular treatment method. You can get some practice 
in deep breathing, meditation, the stress regulation, communication skills, any of those things you're working on in therapy can be buttressed and accelerated by using these computer apps. So lots of wonderful things happening out there, Bridget. And it's important for therapists to be trained in all of these new methods, I think, to have more tools in their toolbox. Absolutely. Instead of senselessly hammering away of anything remotely uh, similar to a nail, we all need that expanded toolbox to meet the scores of clients and their individual goals. So if you had a magic wand and it could improve one thing about mental health treatment today, what would that be? Probably the integration and personalization of psychotherapy. We need to get beyond single theories imposed on to unwitting patients like a Procrustean bed. You may remember Procrustes was that legendary Greek god who was an innkeeper. He only had one size bed. And so the unwitting guest would be cut to fit the bed or stretched to fit the bed. We know one size doesn't fit all, not in psychotherapy, not in any healthcare. So we need to select, as you said earlier, from all effective methods in our toolbox and then individualize to the person at hand. We're gradually getting there, integrating and personalizing psychotherapy, but a magic wand would make it happen today. And that would absolutely enhance the success of individual therapy. How can my audience learn more about your work, either online or in print? Well, they could certainly go to Amazon and select and order a few books. There's a couple free websites. One is www.changeologybook.com. And no need to register. It's entirely free. Speaking about uh, assessments, there's five or six free assessments, lots of resource materials. So we wrote the Changeology book to spread the word of the science of behavior change. Just go there, www.changeologybook.com, or just Google me at the University of Scranton, and you can find my faculty webpage there, including books, lots of free articles, and the like. And all of this will be on the Therapy Show podcast on the page dedicated to your work. Dr. Norcross, on behalf of myself, my listeners, and all of the people you have helped through your work, I want to thank you for your contributions to mental health treatment and for taking the time out of your busy schedule to help me and my audience better understand the field of individual therapy. It's been my pleasure, Bridget. Thanks for the invitation, and I hope your listeners find some of this useful. I'd like to close by reminding our listeners to please subscribe, share, and review this podcast so that you, someone you love, and people around the world can gain more benefit from therapy. There's no need to suffer in silence. Get the help that you need to create the life that you want.